<laughs> so, what got you into doing this work, Chess? I've been looking back on, on the work through my life, and as it turns out, it's just been my natural inclination to always be a guide. Uh, early on, uh, my work was as an adventure travel guide. So I led treks through the Himalayas and safaris in Africa and river raft trips and sea kayaking trips through the whales and treks down in, in South America. Um, I did that for 25 years or so. And the love was going to a place like the Himalayas, going to Nepal and falling in love. It's going to a place that was so beautiful and so inspiring and feeling like this is what this is what life's about. And then coming home and getting people and saying, you got to come check this out. Like, I can show you one of the most beautiful places you've ever been. Great, sign, sign me up, let's go. And so I'd guide people to this new place. And, you know, it's new, it's unfamiliar territory. So teach them how to move in that type of territory, how to be and how to mm, experience that type of beauty. And now what I'm finding is I'm doing really the same work. It's just that instead of going to Nepal and falling in love, I'm going within. And I'm going deeper and deeper within. And I'm finding the same thing. I'm finding some of the most beautiful places I've ever been, some of the most inspiring, some of the most enlivening. And then I'm, I, I find that within. And it's the same feeling like I, I can't just be in this myself. I've got to help others. Mm -hmm. So then I go get others. And I say, I have found some of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And I want to help you find that place too. And oh, where? Nepal? Well, that's nice. <laughs> South America? That's nice. But no, right there, right within. And the feeling and the same questions come up. Oh, that sounds beautiful. But I don't know how to get there. I'm a guide. And that's what any guide does, right? We, we, we move down the pathways ourselves. We navigate new territory. We figure out how to move across thresholds and learn a new language, perhaps, and, and explore into unfamiliar territory. That's what I was doing when I first started going in. And I had my guides. But it was unfamiliar territory. And I didn't know how to get, how, how do I get deeper? You know, how do I get in? And the guides would say, well, let me show you. So that's what I'm doing today. It's the same work. I'm, I'm just going within and finding the beauty and the inspiration. Mm. Yeah. So how do you p get people there? It's, it, it always starts with the, the conversation, the recognition that the, the place they are navigating, what has become comfortable and familiar, isn't working for them anymore. It's too small. It's too small. And if they have a sense of looking for a greater sense of self, they start to recognize that they can't find it in any image of self they're creating, any construct, any conditioning in their own mind that, that they're creating. Inherently, there's a feeling that says, that's not big enough. It's not even close. <laughs> There's got to be more. So it starts with that conversation. How do I get them there? By first introducing them to stillness. They say you cannot see your true reflection in running water. It's only in, in uh, calm water, still water, that you will see your true reflection. <sighs> Dropping into the stillness. And whenever I'm, I'm bringing a new client or student al along on board to do some work with, one of the core questions I ask is, how much stillness is there in your life? And it's like 99% of the time, there is universally a sigh. Like, and then some version of, not enough. Like, they know it. Inherently, the, the soul 
the dynamic of life within us knows that stillness is a valuable part of our being and our doing in the world. Uh, the choreographer George Balanchine says that rest is a phase of movement. And inherently everyone gets it. It's just they're not practiced in it. They haven't, they don't have good guides. They say, how do I get here? Okay, well you stop, start by stopping. <laughs> stop chasing everything you're chasing. And find that you, what you're looking for is already within you. So what's different about um, taking someone to a beautiful place like mm. Nepal, an outside external place, yeah. what's the benefit of taking someone to that, that internal place? How does that change their life? It changes their life because it actually turns out to be the exact same experience except for that they recognize that it's within them. Mm. It's no longer external. Mm. It's no longer the beautiful Himalayas is what causes me to feel this sense of grandeur, this mm -hmm. sense of aliveness. Wow. It's actually finding that exact same thing within. Um, when I used to lead the sea kayak trips down in, in Mexico in Magdalena Bay with the gray whales, one of my favorite things to do was to sit on the sand dunes uh, under a full moon on a calm, calm night and listen into the bay and listen to the whales breathe. And you just, it'd be nothing but silence. And you just hear, and you'd see the mist rising up into the moonlight. And then little baby breaths, little baby whales. And of course, in that moment, it just feels like you don't want to be anywhere else. And so you don't. Your mind isn't thinking about the future. Your mind's not thinking about the past because you don't want to miss this. And there's an amazing sense of love and beauty and connection and unity. And then I started to recognize it when I started to deepen my meditation practice is sitting on the cushion, same feeling. And I got it that it wasn't the whales, that experience, the Himalayas, the whales, all these beautiful things that I can remember that have brought me to that sense of peace. I always thought it was because of the beauty. It was because it was stopping my mind. That's what was happening. I didn't want to be anywhere else, but I wanted to watch the ravens against the Himalayas diving in and out of cloud banks, you know. And, oh, I just want to be present to that. And so my mind quieted. And when that happened, I was present, the fullness of my own being. So it turns out the, the value of helping people find it within is they recognize they don't have to go seeking for beautiful places to bring the peace. The peace comes from arriving in the stillness of a calm mind that isn't chasing self and future and, and, you know, and, and regarding themselves in the past. I really kind of just, it's got into me that feeling that you said, it's not the experience, it's that we're, we're, that we're completely present in the experience, isn't it? Because we're not going anywhere, we're just completely here right now. And because of that, whatever it was that caused us to be here now, it's not the thing, it's not the experience, not the whales, like you said. Mm -hmm. It's just, the, it, it took us into the now. That's right. And that's where all that beauty is, is in the now. If we could just get to that now. Yeah. Through yeah. It's, it's, whales or Nepal or the Himalayas or meditation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just stopping. Yeah, you, had, you did a great job of describing that. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the stopping. Yeah. That's what brings the joy. The joy is right there. And the joy is like... Now you can, you can be present to what's already there because mm -hmm. you're not running into the future or escaping into the past. Mm -hmm. You're here. And when we're right here, what do we find? The truth of us. And connection. Yeah. 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 <sighs> mm. Mm.